Welcome to RCR New Zealand. We are hosted by Camshaft Software, makers of automation, a video game for every gearhead who said, I could make a better car company. Well, this is your chance to put up or shut up. From cam profiles to fleet marketing, you do it all. And thanks to them, regular car reviews made it to New Zealand, the planet's bonus track. Sweet as. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Shit, man. It just doesn't stop. Cheater, 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 cheater. Checking out a GT4 and happy we found it. We are astounded to be around it. This will be the final car we do from New Zealand. I'll miss the feeling. It's so appealing. Toyota Celica GT4 ST205. You've never gone rallying before, but the guys from your Fortnite group don't need to know that. Listen to more ska music. This is the consumer version of the Group B Celica. The ST205 competed in Group A, not Group B. It was such a big story, I thought it was Group B, because everybody knows Group B, but this ST205 competed in Group A, not Group B. Infamous for its restrictor plate cheating turbo assembly. Although it looks like something out of an early midnight club game, the Celica GT4 was specifically made as a rally car, particularly to compete in the World Rally Championships. Because the, for the rules of the competition, which say the manufacturers have to produce and sell a specific number of road going versions of their race car, in this case the GT4, this is the performance version of the Celica Liftback, which came packaged with the turbocharged 3S GTE. As a road ready recreation, the GT4 was designed, alongside other recreations like it, as a homologation special vehicle. Before Toyota, other Japanese car manufacturers had taken their shot at the World Rally Championship, even though the competition was pretty much the European car company's race to lose. Year after year, European manufacturers were beating it like a teenager who just got both his arm casts removed. That isn't to say that Japanese manufacturers, like Toyota and Subaru, weren't formidable in their own right, but rather that this Celica marked a change in Toyota's approach to the competition. And this was the first time a Japanese automaker competed at the WRC with a turbocharged all-wheel drive car and won. Suddenly, the GT4 went from a car pushed out to meet requirements to a vehicle that could potentially sell in the domestic market and foreign markets, so Toyota produced three generations designed by chassis code. The ST165 was derived from the fourth generation Celica and lasted from October 1986 to August 1989. The second generation, ST185, lasted from September 1989 to September 1943. 1943, no. You know what I was doing? I was thinking of the phone number for Paul's Boutique off of Paul's Boutique. You know, the best in men's clothing. And then he says the phone number, and the last two digits of the phone number are 43, and they're in Brooklyn. So I do this a lot. I th I'm like thinking of a number when I'm supposed to be saying another number, but the number I'm thinking of is way more interesting than the number I'm supposed to be saying. Can you believe I used to work in logistics? I'd make the same mistakes all the time. I also got held back for Algebra 1 and had to go to summer school. Numbers are fucked up. They move around in your head when you're trying to think of them. It's like holding on to one of those wet willy toys. You know, the ones you can kind of use as a flashlight. Well, you used them as a flashlight before flashlights were invented. You could buy them at the book fair in elementary school. And the ST205, which is what you're looking at right now, was produced from February 1994 to June 1999. In 1996, the year of this particular model, the Celica won the European Rally Car Championship, adding to its growing list of accolades. And yet, for all the shine this car has brought to the Toyota name, it's also part of its biggest scandal. I love this story. Toyota was killing it with the ST205, which claimed a 0 to 60 time under 6 seconds. It seemed like Toyota had found the rally killer to end all rally killers. Except other teams found it impossible to replicate Toyota's 0 to 60 times. Their engines would stall, or the driver wouldn't be able to safely get enough revs. So after some snooping by the bigwigs at WRC, it was discovered that Toyota was cheating on their turbo by bypassing the restrictor plate. 
Toyota used Belleville washers as springs to pull the restrictor plate five millimeters away from the turbo inlet, but the only way to get those washers or springs to activate was to install the metal braced turbo intake hose that all WRC cars had. The brace hose and the hose clamps activated the cheat by wrenching down on the sprung turbo inlet housing where the restrictor plate sat. And as the hose and hose brace was removed to check for cheats, the plate sprung closed again, hiding the cheat. This was illegal, duh, and it got Toyota banned from Group B, leaving the door wide open for Subaru to slide in there like a friend who learns there's trouble in paradise. Suddenly, Toyota's champion car was the albatross hanging around their necks, and they only had their own hubris to blame, thinking that they could get away with it. Sort of like Dieselgate with Volkswagen, but that's probably a story for another time. But even though WRC had to ban Toyota, they were like, I ain't even mad. FIA President Max Modley said, It was the most ingenious thing I've ever seen in motorsport. Inside, it was beautifully made. The springs inside the hose had been polished and machined so not to impede the air which passed through. To force those springs open without the special tool would require substantial force. It was so well made that there was no gap apparent to suggest there was any means of opening it. And by it, I mean pulling the restrictor plate away from the turbo inlet housing. Do you know if you place a phonograph stylus on the hubcaps of a GT4, it plays Get Busy Child by Crystal Method? The GT4 also has a five-speed manual transmission and all-wheel drive. To date, the car has traveled 264,000 kilometers, which averages out to about 164 and 41 U.S. miles. Modifications include a new exhaust, KOIB rear struts, an HKS blow-off valve, of course, and front spats from a naturally aspirated Celica. The gauges and stereo are also aftermarket, although there is still the original Toyota GPS and receivers in the back. They look like television antennas. Look at this. And it's not enough. Like, this is the, like, the stuff, the JDM stuff that makes us nuts because... It's not enough to have one antenna, they gotta have two. But to make it look more striking, one antenna <laughs> extends more than the other. Uh, but honestly, it hardly works at all. It's a rally car implementation, so there's no real point to have this on here, even in these beautiful wide open roads. The Celica GT4 uh, originally said it was supposed to make 255 horsepower, but now the owner has it to about 300. And fuel economy, well, this is a 64 liter gas tank, and Cam says it gets about 450 kilometers per tank, so maybe around 7 kilometers per liter. Someone in the comments can do the conversion of miles per gallon. Blech. But this is everything you want in a 90s Toyota turbo car. It's got lag to tease you, and slam on boost to reward you, and hissing flutters for dessert. Where does this hole go? It cools down the alternator. The hood scoop cools the cam belt, not the alternator. It looks so obvious when I was looking at it. Oh, this goes here, and then the alternator has this. It looked like it went in and out into the alternator. I can't remember what the owner said. The back seat is a joke, as is tradition. It has power steering in name only. You're meant to heave the wheel left and right like the road-going rally car that this is. Remember Iron Man's Off-Road, that arcade game? and you had to jam on those nitros, just jam on that button, jam on that mutton, never the sin of glutton, I always regret Funyuns, give me Gears iced tea, and a six pack of Tasty Cakes and mini donuts, and leave me alone because I got a dick longer than an infomercial. Because it's 1996, and I want Toyota to be weird again. Toyota, just be weird. It's okay to be weird, Toyota. We want you, just do this again. Make this car again, and I'll hump the floor thinking of you. Because right now, Kia is taking the stinging chances. Kia. Who would have thought? Good thing is, under the hood, this is a lot of MR2 parts. We got, we, we got plenty of MR2 parts here. So there's still a supply to keep things going when these become legal, because they first made them in 94. So that's like, do we have like a year or two years to go? Well, like soon. I mean, could take a look at this. This is the new USA import star. So get in line. Coming soon to a Cars and Coffee near you. The Celica GT4 ST205. This homologation car sold in foreign markets Who doesn't love a replica? And even though it got them kicked out of Groupie Rally I'm at peace in your Celica I'm at peace in your Celica
Thanks, New Zealand. It's been real.